Kaiju No. 8 Episode 11 starts as the news about Kaiju No. 8 being a member of the Defense Forces reached the top brass in no time, prompting an urgent high-level meeting. KG, the deputy director, was deeply concerned, viewing this as a matter that required immediate attention. Juo, the chief of the Eastern Command, suggested keeping the news from the media for now, citing rumors about some countries experimenting with kaiju tissue transplants in humans. But KG believed the best course of action was to dispose of the kaiju and weaponize it. But the lead scientist had a different idea, use the kaiju as a living weapon. Isao, the fierce director general of the defense forces and Kikuru's father, made the final decision. We'll bring the kaiju to headquarters first and then decide. Meanwhile, Kafka Hibino, now known as Kaiju No. 8, was tightly restrained at his base, monitored by a team of scientists led by KG. Unsure how long he had been restrained, Kafka was consumed by worry about his fate. He recalled Kikaru's past conversation about him being disposed of and used to create special weapons. It was a bitter pill to swallow, especially when he had been so close to being with Mina. Mina Hasana, accompanied by several officers, arrived to transport Kafka to headquarters. Kafka tried to speak to her, but she ignored him, and even Hoshina told him to remain silent. Freed from his restraints, Kafka was quietly escorted out. As they exited the building, all the base officers, including his friends, were ready and armed, watching him leave. Kafka avoided eye contact with Ikakawa, feeling guilty for blowing his cover. However, Ikakawa stepped forward, declaring his trust in Kafka's safe return, leaving Kafka speechless as the trailer doors closed. Inside the trailer, Mina revealed there were no cameras and began discussing how shocked she had been when Kafka turned into a kaiju. She planned to compile testimony and footage to help his case, aiming to prove he was human at heart to save him. She listed his contributions as an officer, and Kafka listened silently, overwhelmed by her support. Mina assured him that no one in their unit considered him an enemy. Overcome with emotion, Kafka asked if he could still stand by her side. Mina promised she would always wait for him, causing Kafka to burst into tears. As the convoy departed, Hoshina commanded everyone to salute it. KG was shocked but accepted Hoshina's explanation. Kafka was then taken to a tightly guarded underwater room at the maritime base. Several days later, the defense force members were silent and glum in the training area. Furuhashi tried to lighten the mood with jokes, but they fell flat. The girl Kafka had rescued spoke about his heroism and humor while AOA noted that the decision about Kafka would be made by headquarters. The tension was palpable as they worried about worldwide panic if Kafka's condition was revealed. Meanwhile, Mina instructed Akinogi to compile a document on Kafka to aid his case. Hoshina, usually mischievous, was distant, hoping for Kafka's return. Kikaru nervously approached her father, Isao, in his office, asking him not to dispose of Kafka. Isao dismissed her, showing an X-ray of Kafka's chest with a kaiju core instead of a heart, declaring Kafka not human. Despite her shock, Kikaru insisted on believing in Kafka. Kafka remained in high-security prison, receiving visits from scientists. Dejected, he thought about his friends and his determination to return. Back at the base, the new officers received harsh news about their temporary transfer due to the recent kaiju attack. Mina assured them the plan had been in the works for a while, but Furuhashi and others suspected it was related to Kafka. Surprisingly, Ikakawa agreed to the transfer, wanting to help Kafka. Meanwhile, Aoi contacted a former commander to save Kafka, revealing his determination to keep their unit together. Kafka realized he must prove his humanity to secure his freedom. Director Isao visited Kafka, ordering him to be freed from his bindings. Isao challenged Kafka, believing him to be a kaiju. Kafka stands up and declares that he is not a kaiju. Isao orders his men to equip him with two mechanical arms made from the parts of kaiju number two. Isao then engages in battle with Kafka, who opts to partially transform into a kaiju during the fight. As the battle rages on, Keiji shares some intel with Kikaru about kaiju number two, revealing that the creature was once prideful 
but was ultimately subdued and its body parts were repurposed into weapons. Keiji explains that Isal is the only one capable of wielding these particular weapons. Just as Isao is about to deliver the final blow, Kafka fully transforms and manages to block the attack. However, Kafka, Kikaru, and the others notice that something is wrong with Kafka. Kafka soon realizes that he has lost control of his body. Trapped within the kaiju mind, he panicked, realizing he might be proven a real kaiju. The parasite kaiju appeared, urging him to kill humans. In a desperate attempt, Kafka tried to stop, but his transformation continued, leaving Kikaru to scream in despair, reminding him of his humanity. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for upcoming episodes. Cheers.